Kyber K family. Hello, Mr. Berger. Five minutes after is on time. But here now we are early, three minutes early, right? Woo what is up, Kyber K family? It's so good to see you all again. I love Sunday nights. Do you? I like Sunday nights too. I get to see people in the chat that we know and chat with you, I guess, a little bit. Uh, <laughs> it's um, so it's funny when, when everybody. When you first started with Kyber Cave, I think we literally talked every day, probably for two or three hours a day. And now, like, we'll talk like once a week. <laughs> it was, I think when I first joined the show, guys, it was two days before my first live show. So it was very last minute ad. And we talked a lot, especially the day of the show. I think we sat together at his shop and edited for about three hours to understand how he likes things for the show. And then we didn't talk. We, we Everything got settled, and then it was normal. And then KyberCon 3 happened a year ago, and that was every day, like every other hour for a while. <laughs> and then that ended, and it was like, get out of my face for a while. <laughs> right. And uh, now I, but, I feel like I only ever see you or talk to you on Sundays. Well, it looks like you might be talking to me more pretty soon, so we will see. <laughs> uh, um, anyway, but it's good to see everybody. Uh, you know, we have a great show for you tonight. We've got wonderful Squid Game actor Jeffrey Giuliano joining us. He is a pleasure. I chatted with him for a little bit before the show. Um, and we have a flow that I actually found today um, named Carly King. She's absolutely spectacular. And wow. you can find her. Yeah. Uh, um, she's did, just down below. You can. Hmm? Did you get her permission or you just grabbed it or? Well, she hasn't posted in uh, over a year. Oh, and okay. I, couldn't, I I messaged several a couple times, but didn't get any reply. And but I did link all of her socials down below if you would like to go and follow her. Um, she is a big name, big name um, in, okay. in within the flow community. That's why I was like, wow, you got Carly King. Oh, yeah. so she's got 170, I think, thousand subscribers on YouTube. Her YouTube and her Instagram is linked down below. So please go give her a follow. She's actually quite spectacular. Um, she is. Yes, I have I have her flow ready for all of you to see when she was uh, using double sabers and such, and so. Um, it's a few, a couple minutes long, so you'll enjoy that. But you guys, what we first do on our show, do you remember what the first thing that we do is? Nerdy Anybody? news. Nerdy news. So let me get those. Uh, uh, they're not here. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> Forgot they're, uh, because I had got them on my laptop, but they didn't. Uh, oh. The laptop is right behind me. So that works out. Thank you. So there's a the comment here. Thank you. Aha. Uh -huh. There is my nerdy news. Um, with, with Without the music. <laughs> okay y'all first on the nerdy news is ahsoka season two is in development and the new sketch has been revealed now Ooh. judging from this sketch i am fairly certain that it's ahsoka ahsoka and sabine um oh, on there yeah. so that looks but they're on a finger right so who is the finger representing is did, my you, did you watch um God, I'm, I'm still getting things weird did you watch um the first season of ahsoka absolutely so that's where they yeah. that's where they ended up. Do you remember um Balin ended up on oh, that like yes. finger thing? Yeah, and, and it makes me sad that Ray is not going to be Ray Stevenson's not going to be able to be in the next series after he has passed. Right. Um, uh, I'm hoping that they'll do like an animated version of, of, of like a spin-off series of his character at one point. Um, but if you would like to check out the article that comes with that, I just posted it in the chat and you can also find it in the description if you're watching the upload. The next thing on the nerdy news is the Mandalorian and Grogu journeys to the big screen. Hi, Dran Dran. Uh, if you guys don't know, Mandalorian and Grogu are going to be on a movie, making a movie. They're making a movie. Um, who's excited for that? I'm excited for it, but you know, because I like Star Wars, so uh, that just works out. But I... I don't, I'm hoping that they'll maybe have something like what you need to see before you see this, like whether you need to watch, I assume the Mandalorian seasons, but do you need to watch Boba Fett as well? Because that's, you know, there's something that happens between seasons one and two that happens on Boba Fett. So like, do you need to see all of that before you see the movie? I assume so. 
So right. go start watching now <laughs> while they're in a pre-production kind of thing. Well, my understanding um, is almost going to be like a season four, uh, but on the big screen. Yes. And so uh, if you would like to see the article about that, I just posted that in the chat. It's also linked in the description below if you're watching the upload. That is the nerdy news. And really quickly, I want to uh, thank everybody for tuning in. Please do not forget to like, subscribe, and share to your friends. I want to say we're like 33 people away from our next Saber giveaway, so we can easily make that uh, very soon if you let your friends know about it. I also want to let you know that this show is brought to you by KyberCave.com and KCPMerch.com. Go there, go to kybercave.com for all your Sabre needs. We are a TXQ distributor, and I'm very excited. We have right now in the works our very first exclusive Sabre. Now, this Sabre is only going to be available at retail stores and at conventions. The regular Sabre will not be available on our website. So this is going to be something special. Uh, for some people that don't know, we're actually in um, a couple retail stores now. There's a retail store that we're in in Nevada. So if you go there, you can find Kyber K product. So we are all over the place. Our goal is to be all over the country this year in retail shops and comic shops all over. So we have some exclusive sabers that will be coming out. Check those out. And uh, hopefully they will be out in about two months. They're in the design process right now. They're in the so. pre-production, kind of like when you do uh, any entertainment, either pre-production of it, and then you produce it, you make it, and then the post of like selling it and, and putting it exactly. out there. Exactly. Um, Don't forget, we have a Patreon.com. Um, you can help out this channel for as little as a dollar a month. But if you're in either of the top two tiers, which you want to get in very soon, because in May, for May 4th, we will be giving away five sabers to uh, whoever is in those top tiers. Uh, and one of those sabers will be an exclusive one-on-one, -on -one, meaning nobody else will have that saber. It may have an exclusive paint job or, um, or, or etching or something, but it will be an exclusive. So yes. uh, if, if you join our Patreon, in, go ahead. If you want to be ahead. in that giveaway, you have to be there for three months or longer as a patron at that tier. So next month is the, like I say, deadline to be there for three months. If you do That's right. Month. So go to patreon.com slash Kyber K productions to check out our uh, tiers. You can, and if you just want to help support, you can do it for as little as a dollar a month. That's really, and we have free gifts at every single level. So even at a dollar a month, we're just going to send you a sticker. <laughs> yes. And sorry, I forgot stickers. about that. You can't, I forgot that you can't do comments. So <laughs> I'm catching right, 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 right. comments now. Mr. Burger said, so you guys want to hit Anaheim Friday and Saturday? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, all right. So um, I also want to make a quick announcement that we are going to be having some changes on the channel kind of coming soon. Uh, some of the shows are going to be taking what we call seasons, right? So you know how TV shows themselves have seasons, and that's because actors go do other projects or they take a break or whatnot. And we're going to be doing the same thing on this channel. So some of our shows are going to be taking a break for a little bit while other shows are going to be starting. Uh, so uh, <laughs> hi, Stephen. Yeah. Um, if you'd like to uh, stick around for those announcements uh, this week, not like this is really the stream, but it's coming up this week that you'll find out which ones are taking a break and such. Um, but without further ado, please enjoy Carly King.
All right. Thank you for uh, for watching that. Carly King was actually spectacular. I just went looking for a saber spinner and I was like, that is beautiful. She's absolutely amazing. Well, you found one uh, of the best. <laughs> yeah, and being someone who was new, who's still in a sense in my head, new to any kind of saber spinning, saber art flow community, um, I was like, that looks cool. And I didn't realize that she was a bigger name in it. So, right. um, so you you just you never see that's how much you've absorbed this. That's how much it's become a part know. of your life. You just recognize talent when you see it. Yes. Hey, and I want to make a comment too. I saw a comment over here from um from Mike Berger. Mike, a little more than four days uh, notice would be fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> I would love to hook up with you. Um, however, this weekend um, I'm going to be at a con called Weekend Blender in the Sacramento area. Um, I'm going to be there Saturday and Sunday and then Friday night. My son and I are going up early and getting a hotel room and everything. So unfortunately I would not be able to meet you down in Anaheim. I would love to, uh, but, uh, give us some notice, bro. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no worries. That's just, you know, that's just how things go. Um, you should go I check out White Speed through... while you're down there though. Head over to West oh, yeah, White Speed. I or have not been head. to Disney in general in, mm, seven and a half years or so uh you know it's expensive yeah <laughs> um, right, right, right. anyways um guys don't forget to stick around so today last week you know kevin hogan's first show without us i did a kahoot that was star wars trivia today i usually do this on saturdays but we're gonna do a little bit today star wars mad libs oh um so we're gonna have a little fun with that later but first sir would you like to introduce our guest I would. I am very excited about our guest tonight. We have so much to talk about. He has been on the show before. It has been, I want to say, almost two years, at least a year and a half, because I think it's been about two years since Squid Game came on. This gentleman is one of the stars of Squid Game. Uh, you have seen his naked butt if you have turned in, tuned into Squid Game. But he is also in a lot of other movies that you may not have realized. Scorpion King 3, he was in. Uh, Train to Busan, I believe, Part 2. Uh, there was, uh, And he has the distinction. At the time when Squid Game came out... Um, oh, yeah. I have to show off. Thank you, Stephen. We have our lovely autograph... Very cool. Very excited to have this at the Kyber Cave. Um, he has the distinction of having the number one TV show and the number one film in the world at the same time. So he was in a movie called Kate on Netflix. That was number one. And then Squid Game was the number one series um, at that time. So uh, he is one. Of, I think he's the only actor that have that distinction. He's going to be telling us about a brand new uh, podcast that he has coming up. And so much more that is going on in his life. So with no further ado, please give it up for Mr. Jeffrey Giuliano. I realize this part of your job as an actor, but seeing all those different headshots, just I was amazed at how different you looked. They are completely like a, a whole different man in each of those different little headshots. Uh, it's because I'm I'm what's called a character actor. Ah. Leading man for real handsome guys, which is not me. And then they have character actors. However, in this day and age, the training for character actors is not really there. So people pretty much just play themselves. I'm one of the few uh, people around that can pretty much play anything. Right, right, right. I actually heard with a lot of the, um, you know, with the, the actor strikes, the, the writer strikes that was happening, um, you know, one of the problems that they were talking about with Hollywood nowadays is that you used to go to the movie to see an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie or a Bruce Willis movie. Now you're going to see Captain America, who yeah. happens to be played by Chris Evans, or you're yeah, going to actors, see it. Yeah, the actors, right. get a lot of, the actors get a lot of money, but there's a certain anonymity because they're wearing all these stupid costumes and playing. the. So the character is the star, not the actor anymore. Exactly, exactly. 
Jeff, how you doing, my man? It's been almost uh, almost two years since we talked. Well, I lost I lost almost all that weight. I'm down to a normal weight now. I lost like 23 kilos. You look fantastic. My, after, after I showed my ass on TV, <laughs> I got to do something. If that won't make you go on a diet, nothing will. <laughs> now you've been bouncing around a bit. You were uh, in India for a while, and in fact. I think you kind of made headlines while you were in India because you somehow got stuck there. Or no, was that before? But that's a long. Yeah, that's a long, that's a long yeah, that was before. Okay, okay. Before. I was, well, that's when I was hired for Squid Game, but I hadn't okay. made it yet. That's right. That's so right. What, no. I'm, what I'm doing now is making movies. I just made a movie uh, called Speed Train, uh, in which I play a, uh, a corrupt <laughs> uh, evil prison guard. No, no surprise there. Yeah. Never played a good guy once. And uh, uh, what's the other one called? Uh, Speed Train and uh, oh, Kiss of the Con Queen, in which I Ooh. play a corrupt Hollywood producer. Okay. So yeah, I wouldn't know how to play a good guy. Are those are those films that you filmed in Thailand? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I, I'm up for one, and I'm going to Goa, India, to do. Uh, a show, um, and I don't know soon. Right, so I'm, there's a few, there's there's a few more things have been looking up, but you know I have a I run an audio book business, right? And I'm a book, I'm a writer and a publisher. So uh, yeah, but I mean acting is always the book comes first. But you know unless you're a great A star, it's not that it's not that easy to to continually do movie after movie after movie. Maybe you do three a year, you're lucky. Right. And I think a lot of people who don't know a lot about you would be surprised about the uh, the amount of musical knowledge, uh, history that you have, because you've written so many of these auto books about specific people like John Lennon, I believe. Right. Yeah, I've written 32 books. I started out really as a as a writer. And uh, then I, you know, it became very, very lucrative, very lucrative. I was a millionaire for nine years, but I just I came to Thailand and I decided to reinvent myself as an actor, which is what I took my training in. So um, that's really what I, I do now. I, I don't actually all my my 32 books that I wrote previously will be coming out again on Amazon. But that's going to project that's going to start now and take maybe a year or more to get all those out there. Right. So, so did you have like a midlife, you just decided, you know what, I'm tired of writing. I want to try the acting yeah. that, I, that I studied. Well, I, I, I mean, I was tired of writing because you have to sit in the house all day and write. It's like right. you're in school forever. Um, but the money was so good. I And I had young children. I, I couldn't say no. But yeah, I mean, uh, acting is, is my religion. Acting is how, what I feel is the most important thing for me in terms of any expression of creativity outside of my family. There's right. my family and then there's act. Well, there's my family, my, well, there's no, my spiritual beliefs, my family, and then acting. Those are the three things uh, on upon which I turn. Right, right. I know the last time you talked to us, uh, we talked a lot and you had some questions coming. I want to remind people that are watching right now in the audience, you do not forget, you can leave your um, any question you have for uh, Jeffrey. Feel free to leave it down there and uh, <laughs> we'll try to get those answered. Mez, don't forget, I can't necessarily see all of the comments. So if somebody does yes, have a question. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> She's got me covered. She's the brains of the operation. <laughs> Um, uh, what was I saying? What were we talking about right before that? Sorry, my brain just jumped track. Books and what 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 was important to me? I told you about that, and uh, yeah, I was. I remember the last time you were on, you spoke about your spirituality a lot, and I know there was a lot of questions. A lot of people in the the audience were really um, excited to hear about what what you do. A lot of people don't know that you're a vegan as well. Yeah, I, I've been, I'm 70 years old and I've been a vegan since I was fit, well, a vegetarian first, since I was 15. Wow. And it's a simple thing. It's, I don't do it for health reasons. I do it only to try to support the animals and nonviolence. It's that simple. Right. 
And uh, what I found interesting about that, that uh, again, you have so many interesting things that are happening in your life. You just kind of walk into situations. My, um, life, is that, like, my life is like a movie. It, it is like a movie. You're like, you, I, I you're got, like, I got, into, I got into a big car accident the other day. Um, the cars were totaled. I walked away. I, I guess I have a little black eye here, they tell me. Uh, and uh, what else happened? Oh, well, this brand new house that I just got here in Thailand, we've been renovating it for over a year. And the guy was holding a chainsaw and it mm. flipped out of his hand and went up in the air, hit the hit the floor, bounced up a couple of times and landed on the top of my foot. Oh, cutting, my God. Cutting off two of my toes. Oh, my God. However, however, that was over a month ago and they were put back on and they're fine. Wow. And it, would, it, it wasn't that they would necessarily be fine. It just worked out really well that they're, that I'm okay. Wow. Well, I'm, I'm happy you were, are you able to walk normally? And uh, No, not, not exactly normally. It's going to take another maybe two or three weeks to get back into that. I, I had a pin in my big toe. It just came out yesterday. Oh my now God. Kind of get some good support shoes and just kind of practice walking because that big toe, you step off with that big toe. Right. You know and so the, I, I can't, I'm, I'm a little worried about putting the, my weight of my body on that big toe. Right. So I'm, I'm walking still on the side of my foot. Uh, this might be too much information, but anyway, it was, it was yeah. quite traumatic and it was, you know, they would, they, they thought they were going to have to amputate the toes and that the blood flow when they put it back on, wasn't going to work. Oh my God. So I've, I've given a lot of money, a year of my life and my two toes to renovate the house that you see before you <laughs> really, really nice house. It is. You have a, you have a beautiful one. I've seen pictures of like your yard. Just, I mean, just the environment that you live in. It looks like you're living in a tropical paradise. Well, I live in Thailand. I haven't lived in chosen to live in America. And probably, I'm sure I won't uh, at this point. Um, I love Thailand. The people are nice and sweet and gentle. There's a, uh, everywhere you go, there's the finest fruits and vegetables just by the side of the road that cost pennies. It's just easy. I have a beautiful Thai wife. I have a Thai, half Thai son. So uh, my life is here. And what I do is I just travel around the world uh, when I'm asked to do a movie. Now, I just signed with an agent in London. Wow. And, uh, yeah, a big agent. So I'll be doing more and going over to that side to Europe, which is an eight hour flight from here as opposed to America, which is a 30 hour flight from here. Wow. Well, congratulations on that. Does that mean that? So the movies, if you were, to, if you have an agent in, in London, does that mean they would primarily be distributed in Europe or? No, would no, it's the ones that I heard about is a Tom Cruise movie. I, I don't know all the specifics, but uh, no, they're just, everything's global nowadays. Nothing's really localized. I mean, they might shoot in England or they could shoot in, um, uh, Poland, they shoot a lot in those kind of countries like uh, Czechoslovakia. They shoot there because they have great sets and it's cheap and it's good for the uh, uh, the filmmaker. They used to shoot here like that, but the uh, the government here, the military government, former military government, probably wasn't that great a supporter of in the international movie scene. So that maybe went down a little bit during those years. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, Jeffrey, if you had, if you could, let's say, uh, you know, rub a magic lamp and get one dream acting job, like a character you've always wanted to play, or maybe a story you wanted to do, what would that be? Well, I am very interested in naturalistic acting, which was not what I did in Squid Game, but it is what I do in Peninsula Train to Busan. So if what? anyone wants to judge me and say, well, well, I don't know what kind of, I heard something about Squid Game, but, but go look at Peninsula Train to Busan on Netflix and you'll see the true measure of my acting ability. So I, I'm a natural, I'm what's called a naturalistic actor. I can what do does that it. Mean? It means you just like what we're doing right now. We're kind of just talking stuff. Right. You, know, and you say something, I listen, I go, uh-huh. So what time did you find the body? Right. Do you have any idea? where Did you take it to the morgue yet? So it's completely natural. It's not over the top like Squid Game was. Right, you know, right. Game, we were supposed to be caricatures. In fact, I later found out that I was supposed to be playing a Donald Trump-like character. 
Right. So, so they, I was screaming and doing that. That's, you know, that when you look, when you're an actor, you have to, you have to, you have to submit yourself to the service of the production. Right. Right. Well, even, even Mark Hamill complained about that when he was doing last Jedi, he said, you know, this is not the character I want to play, but this is what the director has written the story to be. So I have to play in service to the story. Yeah, you, you, you have to do that. I mean, this is a team sport acting. It's, it takes a huge infrastructure of all kinds of talented people. And you can't let the team down by any individual uh, desire that you might have that goes against the grain of what the production is. So if they want me to play some stupid guy in Squid Game, no problem. I'm happy to do that. But my heart, my heart is in this train to busan would be one um maybe uh scorpion king three would be another uh vikingdom i can't you know i really don't i don't know all the books i've written if they and i don't know all the movies i've made i think it's around 30 for each or something like that right um yeah acting's is very much like a religion to me it's very serious. If you right. said to me, I have a nice movie for you, just the kind of part you want to play, but the money's really small, I'd say, well, that's okay, as long as the part's really, really big. So I'm right. not some big trying to grab a bunch of money for making movies. I'll take it if they offer it to me. But what's what's more important to me with acting is the is the part and, and what I can say in that part about all of our human interaction. Right. So I, I try to take it on a more serious level. Now keep let's keep track of the time because I want to talk about Avalon, my daughter, and what's going on with her. Let's talk about that right now. Let's get that out there is, um, so people know about that. Okay, so my daughter was on your show. She's a well-known Hollywood casting director and producer. Um, she's been out of work because of COVID, and she's got something on her foot which in – Theory could be cancer. Uh, it's been there a long time. Foolishly, she was told it was just a cyst and she let it go. But it, it now seems like it could be something perhaps life-threatening. We have to raise some money uh, through GoFundMe, through the community of friends with Squid Game and, and movies and so forth. So and we're going to have that GoFundMe in our there. description it's link. Shout yeah. out. It's already there. People can see it. Mezzo's way ahead of you, dude. You don't worry about <laughs> I'm just letting people in the audience know, so if they would like to contribute, yeah. they can go down there and hit that link. Absolutely, and that's what I was going to say. Listen, so uh, let me explain it to you. We're just, I think it's $4,000. I can't remember the exact amount. Away from our goal for her to get the surgery, to have this thing taken out. Now, strangely, she does have medical insurance in America, but they're screwing around with this so long. It's yeah. been months waiting to do it. So finally she went to Mexico where she is now in a in a hotel in a motel waiting next to the hospital, waiting so we can gather this money, this thirty five hundred or four thousand, whatever it is, if people would be please, please uh, kind enough to donate any amount. Uh, you know, I hate to beg, but I, I I'm I'm not too proud to do that. Right. Um, we can we can get this straightened out. She's got two kids. She's thirty two. Um, two little tiny kids, obviously. And Mez, do we have any of those pictures? Um, we, we I know when she was here, I actually had the opportunity to meet her here in the shop, um, which yeah, was so cool. There she is! Yay! Avalon, right there, and there she is with you. Uh, she's a wonderful girl, very talented. Uh, she loves movies. She loves Star Wars. She loves Squid Game. She loves all this stuff. And now, you know, it's kind of like a community thing. Can we help her out a little bit by putting any amount of money into the uh, into the GoFundMe to, to try to help her get the medical treatment that's really in an emergency basis right now? Because if it is cancer, it just has to be taken out right away. Right, right. You know, I think with the, with the recent strikes that we had here in America with the writers um, and then the actors jumped in there to support the writers, I think it's one of the first times that the average American, uh, you know, I think they, they think, oh, you work in the movies, you must be rich. You must have um, all this kind of money. But they don't realize a lot of these writers are, you know, essentially working on, a, you know, a $20 an hour salary. They don't, I, I don't get $20 an hour when I work. But here's the situation. I'm an actor. I'm not a star. 
Right. Stars make all kinds of money. Actors don't make hardly any money. Squid Game would be an exception, but that was two years ago. You know, right. I've, I've already put uh, $17,500 for my sa retirement savings into Avalon's medical situation. And we're just a little bit short. That's why we're going to the community. Right, right, right. So if you can help out at, at all, Avalon, um, uh, you can go back. I can't remember offhand, but I want to say it was roughly two months ago she was on our show. Um, maybe, Mez, I don't know if you have the, uh, the ability to look that up and see what episode that was. Um, oh, thank you. Um, yeah, you can check out that past episode. She's an incredible human being. She's a mother of two uh, beautiful children. And, uh, you know, she was here at the time when we interviewed her. She was here doing work for Netflix, waiting to try to get in to see these doctors. But, you know, anybody that knows the medical system in America knows that none of this stuff happens overnight. Um, I, I, I was surprised, uh, my friend, because... She's got all the health insurance she needs, but they just won't. She can't get in there to do it. They're saying three months. and they're, they're, they're Right. Worried. If it's cancer, that could kill her. I just right. don't, I don't understand the thinking there. And then when she calls up, they say, oh, they should have done that months ago. Yeah, well, they didn't. They didn't. Right. So can we do it? And, oh, we'll get back to you. And then they just don't. So she just gave up because of the time frame and the potential uh, life-threatening danger of it. And she just went to Mexico and she's kind of sitting there waiting to, to get the procedure. She had one little procedure the other day, which I paid for, where they aspirated it and took some of the fluid out of it and kind of deflated it. But they right. actually have, it's all wound around the nerves and the foot and the, and it's, it's, it's a complex surgery. Mm, so that's kind of where we're at with that. So I appreciate you giving me an opportunity to talk about that now. Mezzo made some great uh, uh, graphics of me, and I haven't seen them yet. I think we should show some. <laughs> yeah. What great. you got, man? Now, yeah, I guess you got another one, a collage. Where's the other one? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to make it when we ought to at least see him. Wow. You can use that for, like, when you do cons and stuff, You can, that's what you can autograph, your your board, your posters. Well, yeah. From your, from your lips to God's ears. Let's see about that. <laughs> yeah, how's I can my, totally... How's my, how's my buddy Michael doing from Squid Game? You see him sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I guess he's doing okay. I know, I've i heard um, he was here last year um, to see an agent to do something, uh, and he actually came out to a convention, and so a lot of people uh, came out, and he was, you know, got to meet a lot of his fans. Uh, that was That was a lot of fun. Um, so I guess every, I don't know, once a year or so, he's coming back and forth to America. And I think he did something where he said he was filming in Missouri. It was some part that he was doing out there. So cowboy, cowboy thing, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but, uh, it, it's been great. Has your life changed much? Oh, I know when squid game first came out and we had, you and I were talking a lot and we were trying to take advantage of this position because you are known in the Hollywood community, but your name isn't necessarily known by the mainstream audience. Right. Um, has your life changed at all by having this opportunity two years down the line? Well, I can, I can tell you exactly what happened. Um, I gave interviews sometimes two or three a day for three months straight because I was the only uh, member of the cast at that time and certainly none of the Koreans ever to actually make myself available for interviews. Right. So every, nobody could get to anybody else. So I guess by default, I, they came to me and I did those. I thought that that was going to make a huge difference. It didn't. It wow. didn't. There, I have them all on my YouTube. I did all these podcasts. I did some really big things like front page of uh, uh, Toronto newspaper, Tampa, Florida. Right. Even Newsweek magazine uh, declared me a global star. Right. Uh, but the, that translation, well, then we got hit by COVID. You know? Then we got hit by COVID. Right. Isn't it? Well, COVID, was, COVID was during that, right? No, nope. I think it was right after. It, Squid Game was so popular because people were home because right. of COVID. That held on. And anyway, so, yeah, I got some movies. I did some things, but it wasn't the bang that I thought it was going to be. In fact, at one time I was in the top 1500 
uh, of all the act of the hottest actors in the world on Internet Movie Database. A couple of times I've been in the 5000, um, which is a big thing. But it didn't it didn't translate the way that I thought that it it would. Right. You know? But, it, it, you know, I as you can see, I'm sitting in a brand new house. Uh, it's all paid for. Uh, I don't. My son's going to a really nice school. Uh, up, you know, it, 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 it's it's okay. Right. Um, but yeah, I'm always looking to do more movies. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm just born to play the bad guy. You know, there's no mm -hmm. question about it. I I, I I can tell you now that I wish in Squid Game that we had they had taken up my offer that I could go over the script for the English language part. Right. So, but they didn't allow me to do that. They have their own reasons best known to them. And right. so the 69 jokes, I made, I think I made three times I made reference to 69. Right. Um, and it's, it, it's just, what is that? What, why would you, what is that? So right. I, that, that was disappointing that the script was a little, was weak, was weak, you know? It right. was a weak, weak script, at least as far as the, the uh, Westerners were concerned. And we didn't have an opportunity, you know, many and most times when the director's also the writer, he has bled every word of that script and he's right. not going to let anybody touch anything. It's his. And right. obviously it worked out very well for him. Did, did COVID have something to do with it? Of course it did. You know? Right, right. It was just the perfect movie at the perfect time. And we're going to see now what happens with... Um, with the season two, I will tell you that Squid Game season one was nominated for an Emmy Award for best something dramatic series, maybe. Yeah. Which means that I was nominated for an Emmy Award as part of the cast. So that's, that's something that I use. Emmy right. Actor. So. Yeah, and I, uh, like I, I had mentioned at the beginning of the, uh, you know, in your introduction, you have the distinction as the only actor to have the number one series and the number one movie at the same time. Yeah, that that Kate movie with Woody Harrelson, the, the casting director called me. I've known her quite a while and she asked me if I wanted to do it. I said, no. She said, well, what do you mean? No. <laughs> I'm turn things down really at my level. I said, no, you know, I think the part's just too small. I, I don't do that kind of small stuff anymore. And uh, we, I moved on from that. And so she said, okay. And then two weeks later, she called me back and she said, please do it. Director, <laughs> director really, really wants you to do it. And again, I said, no. Right. And two weeks later, they called back and they said, we'll give you four times the money we offered you. I said, I'll do it. <laughs> so, and then it, it turned out good. It, it turned out well. And, right. Uh, it just so happened to be the number one Netflix show that was the, at the same time I was in that and also the number one. Again, again, this and a, this and a couple of bucks will buy you a coffee at Starbucks. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a nice distinction. You know, everybody in this world starts out from zero. You right. know, and I was just a little boy in upstate New York near Niagara Falls telling people I want to be an actor when I grow up. And I actually got to do that. And I, right. think, I know, having lived a long time, that people's dreams can come true to the extent that they do is really to the extent of hard work. You know, I worked with Sylvester Stallone once and he used to say to me, Jeffrey, the harder I work, the luckier I get. Wow. So if you put yourself out there. Right. You know, I'm 70 years old, which I'm proud of, you know, um, that I probably look reasonably good for 70 years old, you know, and you do. I don't feel like an old man or anything like that. And uh, of course, the parts are less. The parts are admittedly, they're going to be less, but they're usually better. They're deeper. They have more layers to them. So that, that's what I'm interested in in doing. Right now. I know. I mean, you're you have so many different talents. You've got your fingers in so many different things. Have you ever thought about writing yourself a part or that you would just really no, like I to have, write? I have a script. It's done called The Wages of Sin. Oh. And it's it's been done on sitting on my computer. I I play, I would play if we do that, a uh old Sicilian uh, hitman in the wow. 70s that wants it wants to get out, but and they say, Yeah, you can, but you have to kill a child. Oh my god. 
He doesn't want to do that. And they say, well, if we don't do that, basically you can't get out and maybe we'll kill you. Well, that's a big simplification of the film. But I have not been able to look the the talent part of movie making is a lot easier to come by apparently than the money part. <laughs> uh, you got to get, you know, you uh, uh, the cheapest you could make this movie would be a million dollars. Right. Here, here in Thailand or something. Um, who's going to put a million dollars into something? You know, I mean, they just, they, they, they have their own ideas, you know, the right. people who have the money, they don't need to really look for ideas. They have their own ideas. So I spent five years writing the wages of sin script. I'm probably going to do it as an audio book. If I can't, if I can't, or, or like a, like a radio old time radio show. Almost. Yeah. Um, if I'm not going to let it go to waste, but at this point it was like five years ago, that doesn't look like it's panning out, but anyone in the business, any kind of actor or producer is going to know where I'm coming from. This isn't, Oh, poor Jeff had bad luck. We all have this kind of luck. Right. I call, I call acting my heartbreaking hobby. <laughs> you know, I, I knew an actor once he's dead now called Mark Johnson and, he never got anything. He never got anything. He never, and then he got a big FedEx commercial that went all around the world. And he said, "What do you think?" I said, "I feel bad." He said, "What do you mean you feel bad?" I said, "Because I don't want you to get your hopes up." Right. I don't want you to get your hopes up, man. You've been you've been slogging around here for ten years. You got one thing. It's great. It's fantastic. But you know, it's gonna, people are going to forget about it in a couple of weeks, and it's, it's probably one, not going to make a big change in your life. So. Right. It's probably the toughest business in the world. And, and if, if I had to rely on this business, I wouldn't be sitting in this house right now. Um, so, uh, you know, if people really want to be an actor, if they, if they must, they have to be an actor, well, then you, then you have to be an actor. But if right. it's anything less than that, just go do something else because you never, it's never going to work for you. Probably. Right. You know, I, I hear so many... People don't sorry people don't accidentally become movie stars it's right. not an act, you know so it's only the people that have super duper drive which i still do um and are really really committed to getting that result that get it um and even when you do like it's with me it's been hit i'm being honest with you you know uh it's it's been hit and miss i've had a right. lot of i've you know i did that scorpion king was very popular and uh, I've done, I don't need whatever I've done, a lot of, done a lot of good, nice <laughs> movies, but, you know, like they never made me very rich or anything like that. Right. Right. Um, I was going to say, uh, um, one of the things, one of the things that I'm hearing a lot right now is, you know, part of the problems with Hollywood in general is they're trying to chase the big blockbusters. So they only want to make the movies that cost, Two million, or you know, two hundred million, yeah. or three hundred million. Whereas in the eighties and nineties, we used to have much smaller budget movies. Driving Miss Daisy. Exactly. Exactly. A guy driving yeah. an old Jewish woman around Atlanta. Nobody. Or Selma and Louise. That's yeah. That's not going to happen anymore. It's just going to be you know the universe explodes and Spider Man. And the Flash glue it together or something. It's 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 you know, it's Martin Scorsese was saying it. You know, people are a lot of people are very concerned about the state of the movie industry because it's it's all this. It's just recycled stuff. Recycled like, oh, stuff that I mean, a lot of people like it, and God bless them. I don't want to say, but it's, it ain't Shakespeare. You know, right. it ain't Shakespeare. It's it's kind of a lower manifestation in many ways intellectually, spiritually, artistically, emotionally. <laughs> and that's quite a few components that, you know, other movies that we remember, like The Godfather or in right. the 70s, which I consider the great era of movie making in America, other than maybe the 30s and the 40s. But for me, I grew up in the 70s and my heroes were Al Pacino and Robert right. Pacino and uh, uh, anything Francis Ford Coppola did. Um, apocalypse now, all those th those kind of things, and that's you know when an act when you're young, your head is like wet cement and it sticks. Right. So I still have in my acting approach and my life approach how I do. I still have that kind of Robert Duvall kind of. <laughs> you know, you people see me and they think, well, he's kind of loud, he's kind of big, right? 
in real life. But most times when I'm on a set, the sound guy will say, Mr. Giuliano, could you speak up a little bit? Because I'm convinced that when you act in a naturalistic way, it's very much like, has, has anyone seen the cell phone? Can <laughs> someone try to, it's like that. It's right. Not, Where's my cell phone? Right. It might be the way they do it in Korea. You know? <laughs> it's a good game. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I'm that kind of actor because those are the kind of actors that that I looked up to when I was a kid, but I'll tell you what movie made me became an actor. And it was a Christmas Carol with Alistair Sims. Oh, you know, okay. One you always see that's on YouTube now, but it used to see it every Christmas. That was the one that, that, that made me aware of what acting was. And right. that I was an actor. And you see, it's, it's, it's like, if you want to become an airplane pilot, you're not already an airplane pilot. You're just a guy that wants to be that. Right. I, actors many times, in my case, I am an actor all the time, which makes it difficult for people to live with me. But, yeah. uh, I'm not psychotic. Uh, uh, an example of that that's over the top and insane would be Robin Williams. These are guys that are compulsive. They cannot be normal. They have to make a joke or a, something about everything. But a lot, a lot, a lot of what I do has this touch of acting in it, even in my everyday life, you know? So it's, I didn't really have any choice. I, right. I, I, I've often said, maybe it's like being gay, you know, that you're just gay. Right. That's you know? what it is. You're just an actor. That's right. what you are. You can do other things, but you'll never be happy really until you're acting. Right. So that, that's kind of where, what I am, you know, right. from a little, little boy. Jeffrey, let me ask you, if you were the king of Hollywood right now, what would you do to get movies back on track, to get people back in the theaters and enjoying film the way we used to? I mean, I, I don't think you can. You can't because you can't argue with all the money they're making. Mm -hmm. These uh, movies that they're making are making so much money that people are going to look at you and say, you're crazy, dude. We're not going to lose. No, they're, they're not there to lose money. This is every bit... A, as much a business, don't be fooled as changing brake pads and oil up the right. street. You know, it's just like they buy the brake pads for $89 and they sell them for $149. That's what they do. So there's so much cost involved in these that even great actors, I can't think of any right now, but famous, famous, famous actors are doing these uh, superhero movies because they work somehow. Right. I mean, they lost, me, they, they lost me with Superman and Chris, uh, Christopher Reeves. I, I saw it <laughs> back in the day with my kids or something. And But I, I have no interest in that. I mean, really, it's it, it, how can it be serious acting? You know, it's uh, but it's it's very, quite po it's so popular that you, it, that's I, I couldn't. If, OK, I'm the king of Hollywood. I'd have to say to you, Van, I, I don't think I can do anything. But you're the king of Hollywood. Well, okay. maybe so these things are making too much money. Wow. I, you know, I just get worried, you know, especially if you are, say, a film student, you know, they look back to the movies of the past, right? You look back to every decade and how film has changed and the different directors that have influenced that time period. I feel like 80 years from now, when they look back to this time period, it's just going to look like a cultural void. Almost oh, like yeah, we, 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 20 we got, years didn't we, exist. We had, the, we had the president for it. We had that goofy Donald Trump. <laughs> Colonel Thug. Uh, and, and, and vacuous, no intellect, no spirit, no heart, no soul. And we have then, then it's reflected in the culture, maybe. That, that's the kind of movies we got, too. Um, the, the things are rough now, you know. We've let the global warming go over the tipping point. People say, oh, well, um, you can just open your eyes and open the, the weather report. You're going to see what's happening. The, 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 we got AI now. AI, AI is are... approaching. Um, you know, there's people that I'm a narrator. That's most of my work as an actor as a narrator. And there's, now there's robots that do the narration. However, they suck. <laughs> It's, I, the, I'm, they can't do any emotion or anything subtle or anything quiet. It's all this, 
on on the 13th of May, such and such and such happened, and then this happened, and then the, and I, it's, it's just in a monotone, it's garbage. So right. I'm not worried about narration yet, but when they're able to make a character like me come out of an AI, which I suppose they maybe have already and it's coming or something. Right, I'm sure we're close if it hasn't happened already. No, so that so that Mark Hamill won't have to show up anymore. They'll just buy the right. In fact, they'll just buy the rights to actors, and they can sit home and they'll make the movies with. I heard they're making a movie with James Dean now. Wow. Yeah, they don't even need the actor. They just buy the voice, sign the rights away. You go home, sit on an island somewhere. <coughs> we'll make the movie with James Dean. Wow. And all the families say, yeah, of course. So, in fact, a lot of actors. Right now, big actors are already settling up for their estates. So like, this is what you do with my voice and my image when I'm dead. Because That's crazy. That is no limit to making a movie now. Right, right. I'll tell you what, if I if I was going to do a role for you right now, Disney's on this thing where they're remaking all of their animated movies into live action movies. I think you would make a fantastic Carl Fredrickson from the movie Up. I don't know that movie. Oh, you gotta watch up. That's a it's a classic movie, but you would make a great uh, I heard they were gonna do the Simpsons with real people. What was that? I heard they were gonna do the Simpsons with real people. Oh wow. That that that's gotta be odd. Yeah. I don't know. I, I miss the originality in Hollywood. Speaking of originality, you have a new podcast coming out very shortly. I do. Yes, what I do. What, what's up with that? It's called Jeffrey Giuliano's Dog Fight. Yes. And uh, we bought all the equipment. I Actually, I, I looked and saw when I'm Google, what equipment does Joe Rogan use? And I bought the same equipment. And it's coming tomorrow. They're bringing it from America. We got it on Amazon. What do you all, re all really good equipment. And and we, have a, we built a studio here in my house. Uh, so uh, we'll be doing that. Now, that's going to be, you know, that's going to be not like this. Um, oh, is it more of an adult I'm, format? No, it's not. It's not. Somebody says I'm a little too young for the role that you just said, but I'm oh. 70. How old is that? <laughs> How old is the you told me. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't guess he was much older than in his 70s. I don't know, Mr. Fredrickson. How old is Mr. Fredrickson? <laughs> you got to watch that movie. You and your son will love that movie. It's a great father son movie. <laughs> So anyway, I should tell you about the the, the dog fight. Dog fight, yeah. It's 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 not going to be pretty. Dog, dog fights are never pretty, but right. you can't not, but you can't not watch them. Right. You know, if there's a dog fight, you're going to watch and you're going to try to stay out of the way. Is so, it going to be? Is it going to be? Are you going to? It's going to be controversial. I'm going to talk about that devil from hell, Donald Trump. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, animal rights. I'm going to talk about important issues. I'm not going to be a jerk about it in as, in as much as I'm a jerk about anything. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be, oh, they're just saying that he's in his late 80s. Someone says oh. I remind them of Unpop. Who's Unpop? Who's no, Unpop? no, your, your, yeah. your, uh, your podcast reminds me of a upload show that Van's working on, Unpopular Opinion. Oh, oh, I'm oh. opinion. Hey, Mez, so can you find a picture of Carl Fredrickson? Straight talk, in your face, not particularly polite. I don't care if you're upset. I want to teach you something. I want to give you something. I want you to think about things. I want you to open up. I want these bastards not to take over the world and um, continue to oppress people in the way they are. So there's definitely a political, uh, social uh, element to the show. On the other hand, Van, I'll be speaking about spirituality and and because I, you know, I'm not a namby pamby lovey dovey yogi spiritual guy. <laughs> Get your life together, man. Right. You're a spirit inside of a body which animates this dead body made of five elements, earth, water, fire, air, and ether. It's like a little energizer bunny in there that's making you go because this is basically dead. This is a, a manic. It's a a marionette that goes right. through life and allows you to amass experience, which you take from life to life to life until you're gradually perfected. So it's going to be a rather unusual podcast, I believe. 
Is it going to be a kind of documentary style where you're going to pick, say, a particular topic and research it or uh, and then present your ideas on it? Or I'll, I'll have guests. I'll okay. Have guests. I'll have guests. Sometimes I'll rant. I'll do probably do a, se a segment where I rant to the camera, kind of like this. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll have guests that know what they're talking about, like uh, Ruth ben Gant, who's the uh, a big authority on fascism. Which is a big thing now. Bring people right. like that, up and I'll bring up people that know what the hell they're talking about, so we can dive in uh, to subjects at, at, a, at a deeper level. Um, which is funny because you know a lot of people say actors shouldn't get involved in any kind of social political thing; they should just act. Well, screw you. I'm right. I'm, I'm a citizen of this planet. I'm a person who has children and I have a vested interest in the world being okay. You're somebody that has a child. Right. Um, at some point we have to all do what we can. And what I do is I talk and I think and I project. So that's what I can offer up. You know, are so, you planning, are you planning on this being like a once a week or multiple times or we'll get out twice a, a month, every two weeks. And then we'll go to once a week. Okay. Okay. How, how often do you do yours? This show is every Sunday, but then I do another show on Tuesdays. That's more of a medical, uh, you know, we talk about diseases in the body and stuff like that. Uh, so I do two shows a week, uh, Tuesdays and Sundays. Um, look, this technology has been given to us where everybody can have their own TV channel and it can go everywhere. The much as, ABC, NBC, and CBS used to do, you know, right. it's global. So it's been given to us. It's free. And if you just sort of follow a few basic rules of YouTube, they won't kick you off, which I'm right. And, and uh, it's a wonderful, you know, it's just, it's an offer I can't refuse. Although the dogfight has been in the planning for three years and I've, I've been somewhat reticent to go forward because there's so much garbage on the internet i wanted to make sure that from the day i step out that this thing is definitely a cut above that it has value it's a unit. right you don't feel like you've lost 30 minutes of your life you know i love it that you're never going to get back that it has something that's that's gonna move move everything forward so it's a tall order and i wondered well can i do it am i capable of it and, uh, the, the, you know, eventually, the, and of course, and you have to spend a lot of money on equipment, too. It's, uh, that's another thing. I didn't want to come on with a, a cell phone camera on a stick with one of those little lights. <laughs> I wanted a, a real studio. Right. So I got the money together, and I got myself together, and I decided that, okay, well, come on. You're 70. It's now or never. There's things you want to say. There's things I want to say to young people, too. Right, right. A lot of people that I've, I've I've wandered in the weeds in my life a lot and caused a lot of unnecessary suffering for myself and more importantly the people that I loved around me and I would like to uh, if possible maybe kind of push kids a little bit in the right direction right um, yeah no, so I know, um, you know, obviously we talked about Avalon. She uh, is one of your children who she is now a casting director. Does Eden have any interest in, in what you're doing? or I, is He has his own interest. Uh, he's a, a gymnastic star uh, here in Thailand. And he also does weight training every day, Monday through Friday for three hours a day at the gym. So wow. He's really, he's really dedicated about the gym. I thought I'd take my glasses off so people could see that. <laughs> Does he have so any yeah, just like he, 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 listen, Eden is not going to be an actor, but he develops in his own way. However, he watches a lot of movies. And then the other day I walked in his room, I said, Well, why don't you just be a director then, man? He said, well, I, I could never do that. He said, What are you talking about? I'm from Aukin Beach, New York, a population <laughs> six hundred, and I did I made all my dreams come true. Right. You know, if you want it, you can do it. So, yeah. No, I was just thinking, uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, I'm I'm in my, I'm 50 now. And so a lot of times with the technology that's, you know, there's so much incredible technology, but I got to ask my son, hey, man, help me, help me hook this up over here. Oh, yeah, I don't, know. Oh, yeah, I don't man, I don't know how to do any. <laughs> I'm, I'm smart enough to go to Fiverr.com and get myself a producer. <laughs> right. 
Maybe Eden will be your producer. <laughs> Against his will, I can assure you. <laughs> Sometimes I have to wake him up at six in the morning, knock, knock, knock. Hey, I don't know how to do this. What's the password? I, you know. So that's that's actually a bone of contention between us. But yeah. Right, right, right. Hey, we've got we've got about five ten minutes left. Is there anything you want to talk about to uh, let people know about things that you? I know we talked about dog fights coming up. But you talked about a couple of other productions that may be coming up or anything that you, you've got going on. Well, oh, Kiss, yeah. of, Kiss of the Con Queen and Speed Train uh, were done with people that I've known for years. And, you know, this is kind of the way I like to get cast in a movie. People call me up and say, would you like to be in this movie? Oh, well, of course. Yeah, sure, man. Um Mm, but that's not the way it really works anymore. You have to put go on a website and put all your everything about you and your clips and everything, which I, I'm going to do. My agent, my new agent insisted upon it. But that's not the old fashioned way. The old fashioned way is people just know you. They right. know your work and, and they and they call you up. You know? Right. And they're your friends. You work with your friends. Now, that's really the best case scenario. And I had that with Speed Train and Kiss of the Con Queen which are both really, they're good movies. I was surprised. They're really, they're, they're nice movies. You know, Lucille Ball said an actor should never turn down any job. I did turn down a job a, about a year ago where they wanted me. To, it was a really nice scene where I think I exploded or something. Yeah, somebody came <laughs> in. I had to like make a thing in my body and it exploded. It was a cool thing. But they tried to give me like $200, you know, and I said, well, you know, man, I don't, uh, could you do it for us? And I said, all right, we'll just throw in some gas money. So I, no, we won't throw in the gas. I said, what are you talking about? It's another $20. I thought, right. you can't, uh, 200 is enough of an insult. If you can't throw in the other $20, I'm not doing it. I turned it down. I later regretted it. I later regretted it because it's important for an actor to be seen to continue to work. Right, and right. And it on Internet Movie Database. So basically for a couple of hundred bucks, which I don't need a couple of hundred bucks right. for me at all, not even groceries anymore. Uh, I screwed myself out of a good credit on Internet Movie Database. Right. By the way, do you know that I was in Squid Game? What's the one that's out now? The the, the, game. the game show, right? Yeah, I was in that. Yeah, you were you were saying that I didn't get a chance to go rewatch it again to see see you in it, but you I think you said you were in episode one. I was in episode one. They didn't ask my permission. They didn't pay me. It's oh. definitely me. And then they said it wasn't me. So what did they do? Was it footage from the original that they just repurposed, or I assume it was an outtake. Oh wow! Because you know I was in I was in Squid Game for sixteen minutes, but we shot for like a week. Right. So they, they have plenty of footage, you know. I don't know. And of course anything can be manipulated, but yeah, it's me for sure. I got you know, when I, you know, when I, if you're an actor and you're in something, your phone lights up and people contact you. Hey, I just saw you and you know, right. so I I don't know. And then so but yeah, there it was. I didn't send you the picture. I should have. But yeah, they did and anyway. So I mean, how much can you push against Netflix, you know? Right, I, right. I had, I had my lawyer write them a nice letter and say, well, they kind of said something else. And OK. Right. And I don't know how, you know, I don't know. I don't know how it is in the world today with streaming services versus, um, uh, you know, a, a movie theater movie. Whereas I know with the movie theater movies, you might get a residual as an actor. for. Well, I, see, I, don't, I don't know what I signed, because when I was in, in Korea, the. Uh, assistant production assistant came came to my suite to get me to sign the contract. She put down a Netflix contract in front of me with the big logo, and it said there are fourteen stars of Squid Game. I was number fourteen. I was right. The only her name on there. So for what it's worth, I was what they call principal cast in Squid Game based on the size of my role. Right. Um, but she snatched that contract away and said she'd give me a copy tomorrow. She never did. Let me tell you why I think that mm -hmm. might be without getting sued. Sometimes in this industry, the local agent that oversees your employment uh, and is paid directly from the main entity, in this case, Netflix, right. could, could pay you less if you didn't know how much it said, 
how much you were supposed to get in that contract. Right. I know we had um, John Michael, one of your your uh, co co stars in that movie. He was on as a guest, and he was saying that as an international actor, and he was part of another organization that was trying to get rights for international actors. But he was saying there's so much shady things. Like sometimes you'll walk in and they refuse to let you see a contract. Or, always, not sometimes, always. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, he said that, you know, a, a lot of time foreign actors, doesn't matter if you're from America or India or another country, um, you know, they don't get a lot of the representation and they don't get the uh, equal pay that they that they deserve for their roles. And then there's no way for them to advocate for themselves. There's nobody that they can fight and say, hey, you know, I'm being cheated. If they complain about it, they just get blackballed from that that uh, area. I, yeah, I was blackballed for a while in Thailand. Look, only stars get that treatment. Stars can negotiate. Stars can ask for this and that, um, bolster their salary or the condition, their work conditions. But the average uh, rank and file actor like me they don't have any of that. Just shut up. You got a job. You should be lucky. If you feel blessed, you have a job. You're not sitting at home. You're going to be in a movie. Now shut up and do it. And right. for the most part, that's what I, I kind of have to do. However, I will tell you that half of the house, half of the house I'm sitting in was paid for by Netflix. So at least, and I'll, I'll also tell you that I believe there's only, I know of only one other actor in Thailand, Western actor. There's plenty mm. of Thai stars, but uh, Western actors that have a house. I'm one of two actors that have a hot, been able to buy a house from acting. Right. In Thailand. I mean, everybody just lives in a little room. So right. it's, it's a kind of a wretched life. <laughs> as bad as it may be for, uh, you know, in America, I, you know, I guess you're living with so many. There's even far less roles for Americans outside uh, and, of America. That's not, that's actually not true. There's oh. More there's more competition in America. Right. If they they put, took a picture of me and they said, we want somebody that look, looks like Jeffrey. They could have 1,500 people around the block in 24 hours notice. Mm -hmm. the same generals, but here there's only Jeffrey. So that's why I get those calls saying, would you like to do this? I get calls from Malaysia. I get calls from Vietnam. I get calls from Singapore. I get calls from Korea. I get calls from India. I get calls from Thailand because I'm, I'm a well-established actor here. And so they'll call me, but those roles are not big enough to justify bringing over someone at screen actors guild rate. Union right. rate, and they're not small enough that they can get somebody off the street. They do have to get a real actor. So I'll get those kind of parts, which is okay. It's okay. But my career is not what I would have wanted it to be. Whose life is what they would have wanted it to be? You know? <laughs> I, 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 I always knew that Donald Trump was a complete idiot right. back, back in the day. I never dreamed that I would have to have that fat face and that ugly, evil mentality in my brain for the last goddamn eight years. You're right. <laughs> it's like it's like you know they had a there's something called the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Uh, this, our world is now like the International Society for Donald Trump Consciousness. Oh. All of us are forced to meditate. On this lump, uh, whether we like it or not, for years now, almost a decade. Right. So, even just the harm that he's done. You know, I've had to push it. I don't know if you, do, your, do your viewers like Donald Trump? Is this a big Donald Trump pro thing? And you're. I, I wouldn't guess it's the majority. I mean, Star Wars fans are run all over the spectrum, but for the most part, you know, people get along and then I, I wouldn't imagine. The people watching this show, for the most part, are Trump supporters. Yeah. Well, so anyway, yeah. I mean, this is kind of the things I'll say on Dogfight. It's just, I mean, he's captured the imagination of the world, not through his great art or his music, like the Beatles or his offerings as a philosopher, just as a just as a piece of shit. Right. And, and we, he's been, in, we're forced to endure it. I've kind of made a, 
a pact where, look, I'm just not going to look at it anymore. There's not much I can do about it. I'm just not going to look. But then you become apathetic and you become part of the problem rather than the solution. But on the other hand, to become obsessed and sit there watching the news is also kind of like bad for your mental health. Right. Do you watch it? I, I, I don't as much now when the pandemic happened. So in my personal position, my mother died uh, – in uh, 2019, the day before the New Year. So we had the pandemic come up just a couple of months after my my mother died. After she died, I canceled all the cable and all that. So I only had the subscription services. So I wasn't as inundated on a daily level with all of the news cycles. Um, But, you know, I do try to keep up online and it's just... I. I can't even believe we're back here at this position. And but. now he's going to come back. Right. Look at me. There's a very, very good chance he's going to come back, even though Biden's done so well. Um, people just can't get over the manifestation of this very, very old man that seems to lack energy as much as he tries to run a couple of steps when he's coming down the thing. <laughs> he's virile and vital. Nobody's really buying it, you know. Yeah. But he's a good and decent man. I did an audio book called Joe Biden, A Good and Decent Man. I know that he is. Um, but people are just so easy to be. They just fall for bullshit uh, so easily. Um, yeah. They, they, they act against their own self-interest. Yeah, I see children, it all the time. Children's self-interest, you know. If you're going to ruin your life, that's one thing. But don't take the health insurance away from the kids. You right. know, and the family that need food assistance that are uh, food, food challenged, food challenged. Um, we got to help those people. But I don't know. I'm a kind of a lone voice in the doghouse. So uh, <laughs> that's why we need dog fight. Yeah, we're we're going to have a dog fight. We're going to have there. You know, it's, you know, it's kind of the reason that I wrote those books in the Beatles. I was kind of waiting uh, for a Beatle book that I wanted to read to come out and it never it didn't come. So I wrote one. Yeah. Do it yourself. <laughs> and I, 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 I've been waiting for a kind of a podcast where people don't bullshit around and it, it, it gets, it's all, everything is said and is put right out there, right or wrong and challenges the status quo. And that's Jeffrey Giuliano's dog fight. So I, I have to do that one too. Cause I didn't see it anywhere. Mandy Hessen was good. Mandy Hessen was good, but they fired yeah. him. They fired him the other day. Be- and you know why? Because he was good. That's why. We don't want anyone that's good, you know. <laughs> Maybe I'll get away with it because um, I'm not part of a – I'm just me. I'm not part of a channel. I'm doing it independently. Right. Now, did we successfully get through 10 minutes or not? Yeah. Well, I want to ask you really quickly before. Um, do we have a general idea of when we think we might see the first episode come out? Do you yeah, have yeah. a big- yeah, yeah. – March. In March, March for sure. If okay. not before. If not before. Okay. And this is going to be on YouTube, correct? It's going to be on YouTube and the Jeffrey Giuliano channel until we move it over to a channel. I'm not sure how that works, really. Not technically, but how, because I have followers on the Jeffrey Giuliano channel. It's going right. to be show on there. But we have another channel called Communications from the, Undergr- Communications from the Underground. Okay. Uh, which is more, more suited to this kind of political, social speech. Um, but I don't have any people following that, and I do on the channel. So I'll probably there. We go. There's Joe Biden, my audio book. Oh, okay. so, uh, oh, she's good. Mezzo, what's her name? Mezzo, she's good, man. She's I'm telling you. you, she's better than you. Not, I'm telling you, I'm not. I'm, 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 I don't deny it. She is the brains of the operation. Yeah, <laughs> and, and and the beauty. Thank you, thank beauty. you. Staff <laughs> story. Well, listen. Uh, yeah. A- anything else? Yeah, no, I'm 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 excited that you were able to talk to us tonight. We talked about, um, you know, some of your experiences in Squid Game. Of course, we talked about Av. <laughs> I want to remind people that the um, link is down below for that. Yeah, let's see that link, Mazo. One more yeah. time. Yeah, get, get us that link, Mazo. If, uh, if you can't contribute, um, sometimes I know it's a tough time for some people, but even if you were to be able to share it out with your community and let. Yeah. Some of the people that you know, um, you know, and if everybody contributed a dollar, you know, we can get this. We can get, get this done. taken care of. Absolutely. Get that thing done for Avalon and her two little kids. Well, thank you, Mezzo. And, and thank you, Van. It's, it's been wonderful to be here. I'll come back anytime, man. You know, 
Oh man, I miss you. We we love having you on here, and I'm excited to hear about your new projects. I love seeing your your beautiful home and your your beautiful family. It's just uh, I'm happy you're doing well, my friend. Other than the toes, but that it's, sounds it, like it, it, it's not my father's seventy years old. I can tell you that. <laughs> You know, and I thought, oh, my God, I'm going to be 70. It's over. But it's not. All right. yeah. You're doing better than me at 70 than I am at 50. So I'm not going to say anything at all. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, God bless everybody. Thank you so much. Hey, I love you, man. Keep up the wonderful work. Right. And uh, as soon as Dogfight is out, we're going to let all of all, all of your fans on here know about it. All right. All right. Great name. Okay. See you later next time. Hare Krishna. Bye-bye. Adios. Yes, once we once his show in March takes off, dogfight, we will post on our Facebook about it as well. Excellent. Um, so we will get that information. Uh, excuse me. Um, yes, I'm. I'm better than you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know why um, people like think like I. I give you the credit all the time, dude. Like you I, do. I it's none not, of it. <laughs> I, and and rightfully so. so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Mr. Giuliano. I very much enjoyed that interview. Uh, he was quite lovely. Um, I did what I could, like, you know, finding things as talking about it, things that we didn't have beforehand, like uh, the Joe Biden book. I didn't have that information beforehand. I just went and grabbed it real quick. What, hey, you gotta, find a, you gotta thing. find a picture of Ms., uh, Mr. Fredrickson real quick. <laughs> I did. I did. And I, I forgot. I, it was just, you were talking. I didn't want to interrupt with something that had nothing to do with up, but uh, <laughs> you know, there it is. <laughs> And he was even wearing the black glasses too. See, I think he could totally pull well, it off. His, his were sunglasses. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yes, I had it ready, and I tried to like bring it up in the comments, and I wasn't sure if he was going to see it. I knew you couldn't. Uh, right. Um. Anyway, uh, hopefully Van will have his computer back next week, or he will. Maybe or a new one, possibly. A new one. <laughs> that would be amazing. If you do get a new one and you keep your setup there, I can help you with a little bit more permanent of the setup. Yeah, um, I was thinking you know, I can have stuff I, that we got to figure it out. I could get a new one for the, the webcast because I do kind of want to upgrade my game here, probably get a new camera at some point. But um, I want to upgrade this, but I could use the, the 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 busted computer that I'm using now as like an office computer. Gotcha. And then just FYI, when you upgrade your uh, laptop, the camera will actually look better because oh. uh, a better computer will actually process the image better. Well, there we go. We'll, we'll talk about all that. Our <laughs> That's also stuff that we'll talk about more off anyway. Um, so, guys, <laughs> now that we're going to be on to our next segment, which is Mad Libs. Yeah. So, this is our first time doing it on this show. So, I'm going to start with Van. Uh -oh. uh, can you give me a noun, please? Which is, you know, a per, a, a thing. I didn't know what a noun is. I was a teacher. Okay. Um, uh, um, belly button lint. I heard, I heard Stephen say saber. Yeah, that's, that's too, too obvious. obvious. <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, say Wong. Give me an adjective, which is like a descriptive thing, um, like fluffy. Or something like that. But I can't, um, I'm going to have the audience do it. I'm not going to have audience do all of them. I'll just do a random one too because it'll take too long if we just wait for the delay because there whenever is like you, a 10 second delay. So whenever you ask for like a pronoun or an adjective or anything, I always think of the Schoolhouse Rock song that is associated with whatever you're asking for. <laughs> so, uh, so say I'm thinking long, of unpack so your adjective. Easy. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do a verb ending in ing. I'm going to do hugging. Hugging. Yep. Uh, it's fine, Say Wong. Stinky was good. Um, Van, adjective. How about Steven? Steven can do the next one. Steven. Hey, Steven, adjective. Tell him adjective. Adjective. Cold. 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 Okay, I can hear him. Go. Oh. <laughs> All right, and then I'm going to do a, uh, you do a plural noun. Plural noun. Um, not sabers. Shut up, Steven. 
Avocados. Avocados. Okay, and then I'm going to do a part of the body, plural. I'm going to do, okay, nothing bad. Avocados. <laughs> That's not okay. a part of the body, Van. I mean. Go, Brian. <laughs> uh, Van, go. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say fingernails. Mm. All right. Uh, Steven, adjective. Hot. Hot. You hear that? Yes. Uh, so give me, Mr. Van, give me a verb ending in ing. Verb ending in ing. Yes. Um, gagging. Oh. Okay. <laughs> On avocado? I'm, I'm going to do. No, stop it. I'm going to do yeah. an adjective. Uh, dark. Okay. Uh, Steven, verb. Just ever like run. Just not, not, no ing. Bite. Bite. Okay. Bite. No, fight. A fight. Okay, well, now it's spelled like bite, but with an F at the beginning. Uh, <laughs> adjective, Van. Say Wong, I'm going to have you do the last one, okay? Uh, van. Adjective. Sweaty. Yeah. <laughs> Nasty ones. Um, okay, I'm going to do another adjective. Prickly. Prickly or quickly? Prickly, P R I. Oh. Mm. Uh, and, and Stephen, give me a plural noun. Children. 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 Younglings. Younglings. Okay, younglings. <laughs> What's with that again? Uh, say Wong for the last one. Can you give me another adjective, please? <laughs> and uh, unpack uh, your adjectives. Did you did you see the last, last two Saturdays that we had starting morning nerd out? I did this. Did you catch them? Me, uh, I did not. The, uh, I last one. Okay, so last the yesterday was graveyard and I, and then he and I did it together, and then I think it was two weeks before that Frey and I did it, and that mm -hmm. one was quite hilarious. I I'm really good at blocking out what's around it, uh -huh. so I it's a, a surprise to me when I'm reading it too. Nice. Um, say Wong, are you still there, buddy? Give me an adjective. If you weren't, if you don't give one in the next like fifteen seconds, I'm gonna just have Van do it, and we we'll all have to suffer for the last wow. minute by Van. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Did you cut your hair? We unpack your adjective. No, I have not. I need a haircut though. Oh, okay. He's drawing a blank. All right, I'll have just Van do it. Okay, say long. No worries. No worries. Uh, do another uh, one another time. A describing word. Um, soggy. Soggy. All right. Who's ready? For the Mad Libs of Whoa. Highlighting a Pod Racer by Young Anakin Skywalker. Mm. As, far as, <laughs> as far as I know, I'm the only human Billy Button Lint who has ever completed in a, competed in a stinky fakes pod race and won. <laughs> if you ever find yourself at the hugging line at one of these competitions, here's what you need to do to make, uh, to make sure you come out of the race cold. One, trust your avocados. Even yes. if you can't see things before they happen like me, you can at least keep your fingernails open and look out for hot pilots and debris gagging at you. I'm always looking out Number for two, hot pilots. I, I'm always, I'm trust, I always trust my avocados. <laughs> Number two, keep steering. The key to being a dark pod racer pilot is knowing how to fight. Hug those sweaty curves and let them intimidate you. Don't let them intimidate you. Excuse me. That could have been taken out of context so bad. Uh, <laughs> always remember, have fun. Your pod racer might look like a prickly hunk of younglings, but... <laughs> wow. That doesn't sound right. But if, no, but if you know how to use it, pod racing can be soggy. That is Piloting a Pod Racer by Young oh, Anakin. Yeah. For those who are curious what will come on the next Nerd Out, it will be Escape to Naboo by Padme Amidala. Ah, yeah. That is your Mad Lib for this evening. <laughs> <laughs> it's the silliest thing ever, I swear. Um, all right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us this week. Van, did you want hey, to have um, a Really quickly, do we have a, um, um, an upload date for um, 
Outcast or um, not not Outcast, um, New Order. Uh, we we don't have an outplay that j- just yet. We just have a couple things to kind of go over. We are sh- hoping for the Friday after next. Um, so like in a week and a half um, to give you an idea of the work that goes involved, Aubrey and I have been doing pre-production for several months, like yes. actually sitting down and doing meetings and working on it. Um, and then the first episode, the first rough edit took me five hours wow. um, in total. I did it over two days. And then we have like the extra things to add to make it even more fun for you guys in, at home uh, when you're watching. So that kind of gives you the idea of the work that actually goes involved into this show. So I'd really appreciate if you give it a try. We're also going to have merch for it being designed uh, this week in the next. Um, so uh, watch out for the new order. There's actually a teaser trailer on our channel right now. If you want to go back and check it out, um, you can see a little bit. Uh, it shows the image of each of the characters that our people play. Um, I'm in the show. Uh, Shadu is in it, Frey's in it, Graveyard, and Aubrey is our DM, our dungeon master, who is guiding us on this journey and the story. It's actually a lot of fun. This last episode we recorded, which will be episode three, uh, mm-hmm. left on a cliffhanger. So you guys don't want to miss it. It gets really exciting. Um, this is going to be great. It will be a lot of fun, and there's a lot of great moments. Uh, so don't forget to tune into that and then watch out for the announcements that I mentioned earlier this uh, in the show. Uh, Van and I will talk for a few minutes after the show to kind of go over what we're going to say. And we're going to make announcements about some shows taking a break. And we also have the two new shows that are going on right now. Uh, that That's are coming right. up. Uh, Unpopular Opinion already in, has two episodes. If you are in Northern California or on the West Coast, look out for Kyra Cave. We are going to be traveling a lot this year. Steven has really been um, filling out our calendar. We are going to be next weekend. We're going to be in Sacramento and Citrus Heights. Uh, At Weekend Blender, it's the very first weekend or the very first show for Weekend Blender in Northern California. It's been highly successful in the Fresno, Southern California area. Um, So now this is the first time Pete Salazar. If you remember last week's show, Pete was our guest. Um, This will be the show next weekend. So if you'd like to come out and see Kyber Cave, we will be there Saturday and Sunday. After that, we um, our goal is to be at at least two to three conventions every month. So we are, we're packing out that schedule now. Yes. And don't forget to invite people to come and subscribe to our show. When we reach the 1600 subscriber mark, we will be doing another Sabre giveaway. We are less than 40 away. I think it was 33. We are so close. We are not, it's not that far. So please help us get more people to come and check us out. We are awesome. I'm going to say that's it. right. And you know, a lot of times people assume like, Oh my God, I'm going to be competing against a thousand people for the saber. It's usually like 20 or 30 people. It's yeah. not even usually that Usually on our giveaway nights, we have 20 to 30 people. So it's not that huge of a thing. Um, and if you have uh, multiple YouTube accounts, you can actually, in a sense, enter yourself more than once. Um, That's right. So you could do, you could do that as well. Um, that is not against the rules. Uh, the only thing you have to make sure is that you, we haven't had a giveaway in a little while, so you can't have one, one in the last, what, six months, I think it was. Six months. And you can't be, you can't be an employee of Kyber Cave or Kyber Cave Production. Right. Sorry, Steven. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, yeah, no, 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 Steven. And, he, and possibly, I'm hoping has, we're picking up a new employee this week. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I wonder who that might be. Uh, and <laughs> Steven has a beautiful saber and I have a beautiful one coming, I'm sure. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes, I'm finally Me- Metso here is finally going to get the saber that's named after her on the website. So and it's gonna be a neopixel too. Yes, yeah. I have another <laughs> saber here, and my my kids have been playing with theirs. I still need to get another charger because only one of them came with a charger. Oh, um, sorry. Okay. To, it's a, he knows he knows it's not a big deal. Um, I just I didn't even ask you about it if they like their sabers. I didn't even. <laughs> oh, they were they were fighting with them. <laughs> <laughs> um, they were having their own little like fake combat, and I'm like, how about? the garage guys because they're like in the dining room and i'm like oh uh anyway but they they meet like they had friend family come over like we had family that stayed with us a couple two, two or three nights mm-hmm. and they immediately like brought out their sabers to show them uh, <laughs> and they're the shorter they're the shorter blades so they're less like a little less scary right. um, anyway all right guys thank you so much for joining us thank you mr giuliano thank you. uh for coming on our show we really much appre- really much very much appreciate it um and, and we I'm have a special show we have a special show next Sunday. I will not be here. Um, Graveyard, your fantastic host, will be here. And we have a fantastic guest next week, too. Yes. Our fantastic guest next week is our very own Aubrey McCoy, our captain. 
Uh, she will be talking about the new show coming up, kind of like the uh, she and Mel came up with it and how that process went and how it's going now and hyping you up for the upcoming show and other Hope things. That she's a little she's an actress. Scenes. She's a musician. She's amazing. So don't want to miss. If you want to know more about our oh, very own Aubrey McCoy, you want to turn in next week. And right, she's guys, a fighter so too, which is how us. I met yeah, her. Yeah, she's a fighter as well. She actually leads classes and stuff. So, and if you're interested in joining in those groups and you're not far from uh, where she hosts them, we can give you that information as well. Just tune in next week. All right, guys, have a wonderful week and enjoy Talk of the Town. See you later. Adios.